Uh, hi everybody, my name is Lori Mishley, for those of you who don't know me, I'm here at the World Parkinson Congress and I promised a lot of my friends and patients who were unable to join us here at this conference that I would do some poster presentations and post them so that the global community could be a part of what we're doing here today. So this is one of our more exciting posters. Uh, what we did is we wanted to ask the question about fungus. Um, for those of you who have been on some of our Facebook groups, this is a big topic. Um, and I have been curious about it because there is a mycotoxin, a toxin produced by fungus called Ocrotoxin A. And for about 10 years now, there have been a series of studies in mice that show that this mold toxin called Ocrotoxin A, or OCA for short, is actually able to kill dopaminergic neurons and cause a clinical symptoms of Parkinson's disease in rats and rodents. And so all of these studies seem to, at the end of the study, allude to this idea that we might actually want to look in patients and see if maybe patients with Parkinson's are being exposed to Ocrotoxin A. And could that be a smoking gun? Could the presence of Ocrotoxin in humans has something to do with the development of Parkinson's disease. And to date, no one had ever looked. And so we run this very unique camp called Parkinson's Disease Summer School, which affords us a unique opportunity to look at uh, tests for things that normal, the typical patient doesn't have access to test in uh, clinical practice. So when people came out to summer school last year, we tested everybody to find out, do they have abnormally high levels of Ocrotoxin A? Is there any reason for us to believe that the fungus issue may actually be connected to the clinical symptoms of Parkinson's disease in people with Parkinson's, not just rodents? I should say that this molecule, the Ocrotoxin A, is absolutely ubiquitous in our environment. There are at least 20 different types of fungus that make Ocrotoxin A, it is in corn, in wine, in figs, in grapes, and you can't go through a day and not be exposed to ochratoxin in the diet. It's in chicken because the chicken eat moldy corn in the field. So it is, um, it's a big problem, and we know that it causes kidney problems, we know it causes other symptoms, but we know that it's neurotoxic. What's been very new recently is learning how it's neurotoxin, that neurotoxic, and very specifically that it's neurotoxic to dopaminergic cells. So what we wanted to do is look in the urine of people with Parkinson's disease and find out how do the levels compare to typical patients. And if you can zoom in here, you'll see that um, this is the amount of ocrotoxin that a non-Parkinson's person has in their, in their urine. It's about a 2.5. In our 63 people who came to summer school last year, the typical person had a 19, and one person was up over 400. So it does appear that, that there is a higher incidence of mold toxin in people with Parkinson's disease compared to the lab's reference ranges. And to check ourselves, we do this other test called a urine organic acid. It's kind of a snapshot of human metabolism. And one of the things that this test does is it tells us whether um, people have abnormal fungus growing in their intestinal tract. And one of the measures of that is something called arabinose. And again, this is the typical amount of arabinose. This is a byproduct of fungus in the intestinal tract. This is how much you would expect people to have. This is how much arabinose people in, with Parkinson's had in our cohort. So this, this supports the idea that people with Parkinson's really may have a issue with fungal overgrowth somewhere in their body. The fungus may in fact be producing ochratoxin levels in much higher levels than a typical person would be exposed to. And there are at least four different studies in rats that suggest ochratoxin kills off dopaminergic neurons and can cause clinical symptoms of Parkinson's. So we have a long way to go before we say Parkinson's is caused by fungus. I know a lot of people are kind of eager to jump to that, that interpretation. We're not there yet. But what I will say is some of the folks online in our community who have been saying that Parkinson's is caused by fungus may not be as far off as, as we have been teasing them about. So this is just step one. The next step is we're going to re find out is this reproducible, if a different lab does it, if we test it in different places. Um, could there be fungus in places other than the gut, in people's sinuses, toenail fungus, the skin fungus that's growing on as part of Severia? So right now we don't know where the fungus is coming from, and we don't know 
what we can do about it. The next big question that everyone wants to know is if you kill, if we can find the fungus and you can kill the fungus, decrease the amount of aquatoxin in the body, can that change the course of Parkinson's disease? That's what we're on to next. Thanks.